Hi, Dr. Todd Anderson here at Curated Dental. A quick disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional dental or medical advice. Always consult with your dentist or healthcare provider about what's best for you and your family. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more science-backed oral care insights. Don't forget to check out www.curateddental.com for curated oral care products, including fluoride-free and hydroxyapatite-based options. Now for an interesting review of a recent evidence-based research article on fluoride and how it might affect children's IQ. Now for the breakdown of the science behind oral care to help you make informed choices for your dental health. Today, we're diving into an important and somewhat controversial topic, fluoride versus hydroxyapatite and the impact of fluoride on children's IQ. Recent research has highlighted concerns about fluoride exposure and its potential effects on children's IQ. A January 6, 2025 study published in JAMA Pediatrics by Kyla W., Taylor PhD, Serena E., Eftem PhD, Christopher A., Sabritzi, MPH, and their colleagues conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of 74 studies from multiple countries. This comprehensive research showed significant inverse associations between fluoride exposure and children's IQ scores. Let's take a closer look at what this means. The findings of this January 6, 2025 study are both detailed and critical for understanding the impact of fluoride on cognitive development. This systematic review and meta-analysis incorporated data from 74 studies, including both cross-sectional and cohort designs, covering over 20,000 children from countries such as China, India, Mexico, and others. The review explored fluoride exposure in drinking water and its association with children's IQ scores. The study's authors employed rigorous methods to analyze these associations, adjusting for variations in exposure and study design. They found a consistent inverse relationship where higher fluoride levels corresponded to lower IQ scores. Notably, even at fluoride levels below 1.5 mGAL, the World Health Organization's guideline for drinking water, the potential for cognitive effects could not be entirely ruled out. The importance of this study lies in its scale and depth. The authors used advanced statistical models to assess dose-response relationships revealing that IQ reductions could occur even at fluoride concentrations considered safe by current standards. This meta-analysis provides a crucial perspective for public health, highlighting the need to reevaluate fluoride guidelines, particularly for vulnerable populations like children. The study underscores the potential societal implications of even small shifts in population-wide IQ scores, which could significantly impact educational outcomes and economic productivity. This comprehensive review sets the stage for more targeted research and policy discussions on fluoride exposure and cognitive health. So what does this mean for you and your family? It's essential to understand the balance between fluoride's benefits for dental health, primarily preventing tooth decay, and potential risks at higher exposure levels. For example, the recommended fluoride concentration for drinking water in the U.S is 0.7 mgL, which is well below the levels associated with IQ impacts in this study. Another study led by Anna Choi and Philippe Grandjean and published in Environmental Health Perspectives reviewed over 8,000 children exposed to fluoride in drinking water. This meta-analysis found that high fluoride levels in water are associated with significantly lower IQ scores in children. The average IQ loss was approximately seven points for children in high fluoride areas compared to low fluoride areas. Even slightly increased fluoride exposure may be toxic to developing brains. The study speculated that the most critical exposure period might be earlier in development, and the brain might not fully compensate for the damage. Fluoride seems to fit in with lead, mercury, and other poisons that cause chemical brain drain, says Grandjean. While the effect of each toxicant may seem small, the combined damage at a population level is significant. These findings underscore the importance of considering cognitive development as a potential target for fluoride toxicity. Hydroxyapatite, in contrast to fluoride, provides a safe and effective way to remineralize enamel without systemic exposure. It is a naturally occurring mineral that makes up the majority of your teeth and bones. Hydroxyapatite directly integrates with your tooth structure to repair and strengthen enamel, making it suitable for all ages, including young children and pregnant women. Unlike fluoride, there are no known risks related to cognitive development or systemic effects. At Curated Dental, we believe in offering a variety of products tailored to your unique needs. Whether you choose fluoride or hydroxyapatite, the key is to use products correctly and in moderation to maintain optimal oral health.